Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at St. John's in San Francisco. I'm Pastor Sam Lundquist, Associate Pastor here at St. John's, and as always, it's great to be with you whenever and wherever you are joining us from. We are glad that you're part of our church family today, and if you are new with us, a special welcome to you. We're so glad that you're with us today. We are continuing our worship series uh, called Inside Out as we look at all the different emotions that we find in the Inside Out movies. Uh, the second movie just came out, so we wanted to spend some time with all those different emotions and uh, looking at different stories in scripture that uh, pertain to each emotion. So today we're taking a look at the emotion of fear. So we will get to that in just a second. A few quick announcements. Uh, these will all be on our website and in our email newsletter as well. So always check those resources for the latest um, news and updates about what's going on here at St. John's. But wanted first uh, and foremost to remind you that we are still in need of harvest volunteers and we will be all summer um, because we, uh, during the summer months, uh, people are traveling and different school groups are not available. So we're a little light handed uh, during our summertime uh, at harvest. So we would love you to come out um, Saturdays from 7.30 till about 10 a.m. Um, we hand out groceries to over 200 uh, households in our neighborhood. We would love your help doing that. So you can sign up on our website and uh, there's a link in our email newsletter as well. Also, if you're in the area, our 20s and 30s group is meeting on Monday, July 1st at uh, Dolores Park over on the playground side of the park. So kids are welcome to come, of course, too. Uh, we're going to meet up at about 5.30 p.m. and just hang out until, uh, probably until it gets a little chilly. So, uh, we're, but it's supposed to be a really, really nice evening. So we hope you can join us for that. Uh, all the details are online. Um, also wanted to uh, let you know that today, if you're watching this on June 30th, today is the last day to give to our Pride fundraiser. We've been supporting uh, Rhythm, which is a program of the San Francisco Game Amen's Chorus that reaches out to uh, uh, middle schoolers and high schools, youth in the Bay Area, and presents them with a beautiful program of uh, inclusion and empathy and compassion and really sharing a message of, of love with students um, in ways that they might not have uh, normally gotten to experience that. So we've already raised over $2,600, and if you'd like to support uh, the, uh, the rhythm program uh, of SFGMC, the information to do so is on your screen, and today's the last day to do it. So um, uh, thank you for your generosity. Uh, we have all sorts of other announcements uh, in our newsletter and on our website, so check those out. But also wanted to remind you that if you have a prayer request, you can send that to us online or you can always email us at any time as well. We are holding you in prayer and everybody uh, who sends in those prayer requests, we're holding you uh, in prayer throughout the week. And finally, if you'd like to respond to our ministry with your generosity, we are always grateful for that. This all happens, everything online, everything in our building, it is all supported by um, your generosity. So if you'd like to give uh, the website and the text um, a link to do so is uh, on your screen. With that, let's go ahead and get started with our message today. Uh, as I mentioned, we are in our Inside Out series. This is week four, and uh, this week we are back with uh, the character of Peter, who we spent time with last week as Peter uh, grappled with his disgust, faced all of these, um, in his mind, all these uh, disgusting foods that God was saying, these are not actually unclean things, and really spending some time um, with his uh, disgust and what it means to open himself up to, uh, to other people. We are rewinding his story a little bit, and this week uh, we're not seeing him face disgust, we're seeing him face fear. And this is a, probably a, a familiar story to you. Even if you don't know a ton about Scripture, you probably will know the story. Uh, we find it in three of the Gospels, and this is Jesus walking on the water. So we are going to be, uh, there's three versions. We are in the Gospel of Matthew for this version today. So here are these words from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 14. Right then, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side of the lake while he dismissed the crowds. When he sent them away, he went up onto a mountain by himself to pray. Evening came and he was alone. Meanwhile, the boat, fighting a strong headwind, was being battered by the waves and was already far away from land. Very early in the morning, he came to his disciples walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! They were so frightened, they screamed. Just then Jesus spoke to them, Be encouraged. It's me. Don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. Then Peter got out of the boat and was walking on the water toward Jesus. 
But when Peter saw the strong wind, he became frightened. As he began to sink, he shouted, Lord, rescue me. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him, saying, You man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? When they got into the boat, the wind settled down. Then those in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, You must be God's son. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we come to you on uh, this new day, and we pray for new openness. May we set aside uh, all that we may know and uh, have experienced with this story before. May we set it aside and be open for whatever fresh breath of newness that you have for us. Open our hearts, our minds, our ears, our full selves to all that you have for us today. Amen. So fear, uh, as you can tell, is where we'll be spending our time today. Uh, we have, uh, in our Inside Out series, uh, we've spent time with joy and sadness and disgust was last week, and so we're here today with fear. So what's, what is fear? Um, I thought it would be best, as we did last week, uh, to hear a little bit from our Inside Out friends to tell us a little bit about fear. So take a look. When the unexpected is staring you in the face, fear is there to keep you safe. With speed and wisdom, fear assesses the situation and settles your nerves in his own special way. He's got this. Thank you, fear. So fear is our danger, danger, danger emotion. Uh, we feel fear when there is something, something uh, potentially harmful that is... Uh, going to hurt us, that's coming our way, or that is, is going to encounter us in some way. You know, that can be a real thing, like when our church youth bring a, their pet snake to the blessing of the animals, and they make me bless the snake, which is one of my fears. Uh, I love it anyway. Or it could be an imaginary thing. It could be something that we've just dreamt up uh, and, and anticipated in our, in our minds. But whatever it is, when that dangerous thing begins to threaten us, fear jumps in, and we know what happens. Adrenaline starts to pump, and we are ready for action. We are ready to either run towards or run away from whatever scary thing is in our way. So fear's job is to keep us safe from harm. But sometimes fear can do such a good job of protecting us that it also causes us to freeze, to remain stuck, to remain safe and sound with the familiar, um, unwilling to grow, and unable to move in new directions. Fear can uh, hold us really, really tight. Our passage today uh, begins to un unravel what, what fear is, and uh, Peter specifically in the story is grappling with fear. So this moment uh, that we read happens uh, right after Jesus uh, feeds the, the 5,000. There's this miraculous multiplying of bread and fish, and Jesus and the disciples are able to feed thousands and thousands of people with just a few of those. So that's done, and Jesus sends the crowds away, and he sends the disciples away on a boat, and uh, he goes off alone. He goes up to pray on the mountain. So the disciples are in this boat. They are all alone. They are now out at sea, and night comes, and this big storm hits the boat. They are battered by wind and waves, and land cannot be seen. They are surrounded by miles and miles and miles of powerful, stormy water, and they have to figure out what to do all for themselves. So in the midst of this chaos, this storm, their boat being thrown every which way, all of a sudden, Jesus appears on the lake in front of them, and he's walking on the water. If that storm wasn't scary enough, now the disciples are kind of terrified, kind of freaked out, because they think there's a ghost coming towards them. And what they think is a ghost from out in the distance says, be encouraged, it's me, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. There's a storm. There's a ghost. A lot of uncertainty. And of course, there is fear. And they hear, don't be afraid. And then in that boat of all these disciples, something stirs in Peter. He's sitting with everyone in this boat, being tossed by the waves, scared half to death, I can imagine. Who knows? He hears this ghost calling out to him, don't be afraid. And he doesn't run away. Something inside of him, who knows really, is ready to trust it. 
So he asks Jesus, call me out there. Call me out onto the water. I'm ready to follow. So in the storm, in the chaos, Peter musters up this courage to step out of the boat, to move forward past the fear. He takes his foot out and steps onto the water. But only, only after seeing and knowing that he's following someone who has gone before him. In some ways, fear is always a little lonely. If you are standing at the edge of a diving board, scared to death of diving, you are the one, and only you are the one, who can decide if and when you're ready to jump. Whatever fear you may face, you are the one who has to step out of the boat. And that can be lonely. It's only you. It can feel in those moments like you are the first and the only person who has ever had to deal with the, cert the uncertainty uh, that is in front of you. But what a gift we have in brave people who take that first jump. That's what gives us strength and reminds us that we are not alone in our fear. You know, I like, I like to think of myself as, as pretty fearless. Most of the time, I am ready to throw caution to the wind and try something new, try anything, and kind of dive into things head first. I, I think I am, anyway. But this week, as I thought about fear, I kind of realized I, I've been kidding myself uh, a little bit, or at least I wasn't always this way. You know, one of the things I love to do, I love to go cycling. Uh, I have had a bike for a long time. I haven't used it in a while. Um, but I used to do, and, and I have kind of recently, uh, done, you know, 50 to 60 mile rides all around the bay. I do it when I can. But when I was little, I was scared to death of my bike. Even when all the other kids in the neighborhood were all on their two-wheelers, I was afraid to do it. I thought it was going to fall down. It scared me to death. I also, if you know me at all, I love to sing. I've been in choirs uh, for all sorts of times in my life, and I've, you know, danced on stage and show choir and different chorus performances. I've had solos at Symphony Hall, uh, which has been really cool. But I used to be scared to death of it. I wouldn't get, be, you know, caught dead, stuck on stage singing in front of people. I also used to be a theme park designer in my former life. I made a career out of designing rides and roller coasters. I was terrified of roller coasters growing up. I, I hated them and I hated the idea of them and just standing underneath them made me nauseous and sick to my stomach. And you'd have to drag me kicking and screaming to get me on one of those things. I was afraid of all of those things. And it turns out that I needed somebody in my life to call out and say, follow me, don't be afraid. And luckily, I had a fearless someone by my side. That was my little brother. He rode his two-wheeler bike before me. He sang in school musicals before me. He got on upside-down roller coasters and probably regular side-down roller coasters before me. He went before me, and I was the one that followed. He was always willing to just go and get scraped up and fail and try and jump and walk through the dark long before I was ever willing to. And his bravery helped me know that I could do much more than I thought that I ever could do. He, he and I actually, uh, we shared a bedroom for years. And uh, once I got my own room, it was way on the other side of the house. Um, and I was really scared. It was definitely one of those rooms where you could hear all the weird noises, you know, the water heater and the, the wind outside. And I knew I was like four rooms away from everyone else. I was terrified. And so for the longest time in the middle of the night, I would run back to my brother's room and my parents would find me there in his bed right next to him in the morning. Over and over again, he was the fearless person that I needed to say and to show me don't be afraid. He's, he was someone who would go to the other side of it so I could know I wasn't alone. Now, I was reading uh, more reflections on fear this weekend, and one theologian was recounting uh, stories from uh, the gay rights movement 
of those who are on the front lines of, of work. And there was a lot of fear there. There were people fighting for justice, people fighting just to be seen in this world. And at the same time, afraid of what people in power would do, and also afraid of just what neighbors would do, needing a place where they could find their courage. Uh, Harvey Milk said this when he was remembering that time. He said, I will never forget what it was like coming out and having nobody to look towards. I remember that lack of hope. And without hope, not only gays, but the blacks, the seniors, the handicapped, the us's, the us's will give up. Fear can make us give up. And a lack of courage and not finding courage in others can make us give up. And more often than not, our courage does come from others. It comes from following in the footsteps of people who have conquered or who are conquering their fears. I think that's one of the reasons that community is so important. To have a place, to have people, where we can share our fear and our bravery with one another. In our community, um, here in, in, in our, our room on Sundays, and even in all our community, however we may be connected, there are a lot of fears that we all have. A lot of different ones and different seasons of life have different fears that erupt from them and they change over time. You know, some of them are, you know, I'm, I'm scared of what high school might be like. I just had a new baby. I have no idea what to do. <laughs> I packed up everything and, and moved to San Francisco. And, and, and now what? What do I do? I'm getting really sick and I don't know what the road ahead looks like. My career is taking some sideways turns, and I am really scared of what's ahead. All sorts of different fears, and I'm sure you have your own. But in this same community of St. John's are people who have walked those same journeys, who have made it to the other side, and they're here too with their wisdom and their encouragement to give us strength. Now, Peter stepped out of the boat. We don't know exactly what happened, but he walks. He takes a step or two or ten walks on the water, but then there's this big gust of wind that freaks him out. His fear takes over, and all of a sudden, he is splash in the sea. Jesus pulls him up out of the water, and he says to him words that I think we most often hear, I'll speak for myself, we most often hear with some disdain but they can equally be said with grace and gentleness. He says, you man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? Or in other words, it's okay. I'm here. You followed me. You didn't make it all the way this time. Fear got the best of you, but you can try again next time. Fear is a tricky thing. It doesn't just go away. Very rarely do we get to snap our fingers and have our fears just disappear. You work at it. It ebbs and it flows. Sometimes it does get the best of you. You get frozen and can't move. Sometimes you take a step backward. But what a gift it is to know that in the storms of life, you have people around you to follow and help you take those difficult steps forward, no matter where you're at on that journey, to give you strength, to cheer you on, to remind you you're not alone, and to lift you out of the water when you drown a little bit. In one of my scariest moments, I was coming out to my, my family. I did that one by one. And while I had a lot of people in my life who had walked the water before me, I was still terrified. It was so uncertain. I didn't know what people would say. So I stepped to the edge of the boat and I took a deep breath and uh, I called my brother, my little brother back in Iowa, called him on the phone. He answered the phone and I said, you know, I have something to tell you. I, uh, I am going through a lot right now, and uh, I just broke up with someone, and 
I'm really torn up about it. Honestly, I'm pretty heartbroken. Uh, luckily, they moved away to Kansas City, so I don't have to see them around here anymore, but I'm really torn up. It's been really hard. Oh, and by the way, uh, the person I broke up with was a guy. And without missing a beat on the other line, my brother said, well, Kansas City's like three hours away, so, you know, I can just like show up at his house if you want me to. <laughs> he was willing to do that. I said, no, no, <laughs> we're not going to do that. But I knew I wasn't alone in my fear. His fearlessness has always been a gift to me. May we be grateful for all of the brave, fearless people in our lives. All the people who have shown us the way, who we've been able to follow, who've given us strength, who've given us courage, who've lifted us up when we've been too scared. And in those moments where it might feel like there is no one to follow, when that loneliness of fear gets a hold of us, those times when we might have to go out on our own, may we, like Peter, be able to fix our eyes through the storm on Christ and listen to the voice of the Spirit that says, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Amen. It's been so good to be with you today. I hope that you're well on whatever corner of life and whatever twist and turn of life's journey you are on. Uh, I hope that you know that uh, our community is uh, holding on to you and embracing you. Hope you can feel uh, the strength of that. And we are praying for you. Know that our community, all of everyone, uh, is, is being held in prayer always. May you go into this week in the storms of life, and they do get stormy sometimes, knowing that God is with you. You are never alone. Look to all the people in your life who have shown such courage and such bravery, and know that you are showing such courage and such bravery to someone else in one of life's storms. And as you go, know that there is a God who watches over you and smiles upon you, that Christ walked this earth and walks with you still, your constant companion, and the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart, warming your heart, always whispering, I love you. Go in peace and go in love. Happy Pride. Amen. <laughs>